they haven't connected. Okay. Interesting, yeah. Mm. All right, so then I further where I went down and um, on uh, section two, item four. <clears throat> when the design of any proposed sanitary system includes the of such is limited to, to pumps and grinder pumps. My question is, we've given Guy all sorts of authority to act for the commission. Do we want to leave it that way, or do we want Scott to come back to us and, and ask for the authority again? All rise. <laughs> all rise in the presence of the Honorable Richard Bowen. <laughs> Sorry for being a couple minutes late. So you got oh, it's quite all right. Select them. Uh, uh, you had a verbose. I understood I was meeting with you at 2.30. Yeah. Yes. With who? You had a verbose one that you had to meet with. said that I was meeting with no one at 2.30, meeting with Alan at 3, and meeting with you at 3.30. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. So the office said that. You want this chair, Rich? Oh. And I put it on the clipboard where You're gonna sit the chairman back. instructed me to do. I take a comfortable chair. I should just do what I want. I should. <laughs> <laughs> Does the record show that our town attorney next? is here? Scott. Scott, Rich. Nice to meet you. As is our director. Of We on TV or anything? Yes. We are. You're live. Oh boy. No swearing. Not at least not any more than usual. No more than usual. <laughs> Strictly the PG jokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to continue with the questions or do you want to? Uh, I just want to explain that uh, our purpose in discussing things with our town attorney is to get a understanding of how our bylaws and the commission itself interact and which are how they govern our, our actions and what we are able to do with the interpretation. So, but Peter, you had some questions. So why don't you continue you on? You want to continue with them? Yeah. Well, Chair, have you got the package of the uh, Bylaws? Yes, I have a pack. Okay, I'll grab it. Right here. Pass it around. That, is that the bylaws or the child? Well, that's the charter. That's the charter. That's the charter. I'm sorry. I, don't know. No, I, I have a, I have a spare set. Okay, no. Thank you. Here's the, sorry, here's the bylaws. Rich. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you got here? Well, we're on. But I've got I, 10 questions that he's on section, we, we were he's starting out with. Two of this thing right now. So if you, if you look to um, section one, division five, article two, section one. Division <clears throat> five, article one, section one, BOD. So it's like the no, third this, page. Oh, okay. Yeah, page three. Section, section, section two he's on. Okay. It, it states that. Number four that once, once the sewer system is put in, that they have 60 months to connect. That's a tough part. Can we charge them an EDU after the five years, whether they're connected or not? Where, that's a top, top part of that. I think. Up there? Yeah. Or, yep. Oh, okay. All right, let's, let's have a look at this. It read from May down, about halfway down, Rich. Mind if I read it out loud? Go right ahead. Sometimes it helps me. Go right ahead. The owner of all <clears throat> houses, buildings, or property used for human occupancy, employment, recreation, or other purposes, that doesn't leave much else, situated within the town and abutting on any street, alley, or right of way in which there is now located or may in future be located a public sanitary or combined sewer of the town, is hereby required at his expense 
Uh, I guess women didn't own property in these days. <laughs> uh, to install suitable toilet facilities therein and to connect such facilities and all other drains designed to carry sewage directly with proper public sewer in accordance with the provisions of the bylaw after reasonable notice in writing to do so by the commissioners, said notice uh, being not less than one year. An owner who, having received such notice co to connect, and uh, you need to go up to microphone. Oh, okay, you need the microphone? All right. Okay. Uh, so an owner who, having received such notice to connect, and whose property subject to such notice uh, is then being fully serviced by a soil absorption system. Is that like a... a that's your regular... Yeah, that's a Title five. Your regular mm -hmm. septic system, yeah. Well, I've never heard it referred to as a soil absorption Or a cesspool. System. Yeah. Or, you know, 55-gallon um, drum. I say yes, I thought that was Scandinavian anyway, service. Uh, uh, in full compliance with uh, Title V and all other applicable regulations, in which SAS was first the subject of a certificate of compliance issued pursuant to said Title V, no more than 60 months prior to the date of such notice connect, may, upon the owner's written notice of intent received by the commissioners, postpone the required connection to the public sewer to a date no later than 60 months subsequent to the date of such notice to connect. So, Peter, my, is, run the question by me again, now that I've read all that. <coughs> well, Actually, now that you've read that, is that 10 years? No, five years. Five years. You read it, read it again. If you go back to pursuant to said Title V and no more than 60 months prior to the date of such notice to connect, yep. may upon the owner's written notice of intent received by the commission postpone the required connection to the public sewer to a date no later than 60 months. All right, so let's back So up. is that conceivable that's two 60-month periods? Well, I don't... Yeah. No, it'd be the... No, I don't think so. So... Okay. He's got... He or she... Um, or it at this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, 60 months... Could go on. ...from the notice... ...from the owner's written notice of intent received by the commissioner. So I send this notice to you folks saying that 60 months from now, I intend to connect. So, so my question there's is- There's five years, but let's, well, hold on, let's figure out how quickly you gotta send that notice because uh, there's gonna be a little bit more pad in there. Uh, so well, the when, owner, blah, 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 blah. Wouldn't the clock start when the commissioners notify the owner? Yes. So directly uh, in writing to do so. So you send me a notice that uh, not less than one year, you send me a notice that I'm gonna have to connect and, uh, and that I have to connect within one year. That's the way I, that's the first paragraph. That's the way I read that. Mm -hmm. Unless. Or less, yes, quite. No, or, or unless you have a Title V, which gives you five years. Okay, mm -hmm. so, well, you're jumping ahead. Okay. <laughs> Sandy. Uh, Put the muzzle. Oh, well, now, be nice. The uh, second paragraph. So, you have sent me a notice saying connect. And I had just got myself a brand new Title V system, just spent 30, 40, 50,000 bucks doing that. Um, and, you know, I want a chance to amortize some of that expense. I don't want to just have to throw it away and then go connect to the sewer system. So I get the notice from you saying in, uh, Not less than in, not less than one year, 
you, Bowen, must connect. It doesn't say how quickly the notice has to come back from me, but it does say that if I send a notice to you that I have a, I'll, I'll just say for shorthand, a new or a compliant Title V system, uh, I may delay connecting to the sewer system for 60 months, up to 60 months, no more than 60 months from the date that you sent the notice uh, to the property owner, to me. So you're sending an order to the property owner saying connect. The owner says, hey, I've got a compliant Title V system. I just spent 50 grand to get one put in. I, I don't think I should have to. Under this, the owner sends a notice to the commission saying that under the provisions of this paragraph, I want to delay up to 60 months from the date that you sent that notice to me that I want to delay 60 months before I have to connect to the sewer. So you're talking about a five-year period here. Okay. So what my question is, <laughs> after the five years is up, yep. can we charge them an EDU whether they have connected or not? Uh, I probably wouldn't. Um, that's, that's probably what not how I would approach it in the first instance. What enforcement measures would be there to ensure that they did connect after the 60 well, months? Well, we'd have to file a complaint uh, probably in district court or even superior court requiring them to. What, what if we had a policy that said we could? All right, well, here are penalties. Uh, the commissioners or their agents shall have the authority to enforce this bylaw, um, its regulations, uh, any person who violates any provision of this bylaw shall be punished by a fine of $300. Uh, in addition, um, any person who violates any provision of this bylaw regulation issued by the town or commissioners shall be liable for a civil penalty of not more than $5,000 each day or portion thereof during which a violation continues shall constitute a separate offense uh, and each provision of the bylaw or regulation shall constitute a separate offense. So, uh, and then if you drop down to section four on the last page, as an alternate to civil or criminal prosecution, the commissioners or their agents or the town police or any other person designated by the town as having police powers uh, as enforcing persons under this bylaw may enforce this bylaw or regulation or permit, blah, blah, basically by writing a ticket. And then it gives the, uh, the ticket amount. So, look, you could send out an EDU charge note. You certainly could, and that, and that would get the person's attention. The issue I have with that is the bylaw already provides an enforcement mechanism, which differs from just sending them the notice. You know, when somebody's paying a fee, in this case, uh, EDU, uh, they're paying for a service that they've received. Now, in this case, granted, you know, it's a service they should be receiving, mm -hmm. but they're inappropriately ignoring uh, their obligations. So you're on weaker ground when you're asking to pay a fee for a service that they're not actually receiving. You're on weaker ground because the bylaw provides an enforcement mechanism, a couple of different enforcement mechanisms, for actually sanctioning them for not complying with your order. And in this case, you've got the soft one, which is the uh, section four of the non-criminal disposition. Start writing some tickets. 
uh, or you've got the, the tough one under Division 5, Article 9, Section 1, and uh, Section 2, you know, 5,000 bucks. And then the, the language, each day or portion thereof, during which the violation continues, shall constitute a separate offense. So, you know, if, if we were in trouble with DEP or EPA, God forbid, uh, you know, they'd be looking to find us 10,000 bucks for every day we were out of compliance. You know, and I know that kind of penalty, I don't know about you, but when I hear about a penalty like that, it terrifies me, because that could be a lot of money. Well, guess what? Your bylaw gives you the same power to go after a scoff law. So um, I think rather than charging them for a service that they're not receiving, use the power you've got in the bylaw. Okay. Now, if you use that power and you do find them the $5,000 and they don't pay it, can you put a lien on the property as you would be able to do if they didn't pay their EDU? I think at that point, uh, I'd probably want to talk to John Foster about this before I give you the... The, uh, the idea of charging them an EDU was uh, to lien. get their attention, yeah. but also we have the power to use it then as a lien on the property. Yeah, and, and so what uh, I would suggest is that if they're not paying these things, I believe, and again, subject to confirming with John, uh, he can add uh, the unpaid amounts to the taxes that are owed. So it, it's, uh, basically that becomes a lien. Now, in order to charge them the $5,000 penalty, do we have to go to court? Well, says penalties shall have the authority to enforce any person who violates shall be punished shall be liable for a civil penalty of not more than five thousand dollars shall be not may be shall be that's good so I think that uh, you, you could certainly send them a, a violation notice citing penalty, but to actually enforce it, you're probably going to end up having to go to court. Rich, in the same vein, assuming as it describes, in all likelihood, it's a new installation, we just ran a pipe down the street, could we simultaneously be charging a, a betterment? Once the pipe goes down the street, they're automatically yeah, they get automatically the betterment. Yeah, they automatically get the betterment. But I have a bigger question, and I don't know if it's for Rich or not, but um, all the hookups, I mean, I know we're in a moratorium now, and I'm new, I have no experience with this, how it was handled in the past. But uh, Say Mr. Smith gets, uh, you know, he, he gets his notice 60 months. Where do we fall in getting that notice? Are we notified? Are we in the loop at all? Uh, we have uh, to send the notice out. But that's true. But how do we know that someone's completed a property and is ready to be hooked up is what I'm getting at. There's part of requirements within this yeah, is that uh, they show cause or they, they complete the documentation. So I've sent, you know, you sent me the notice saying hooked up, I sent back a notice claiming my, we'll call it deferral period. Uh, you just probably have to come up with a, a way in house to keep a record of when these different deferrals uh, ran out. Yeah, and not even the deferrals. I'm saying like when someone is building a house yep. and uh, they get their final inspection from the building department so they can be issued a certificate of occupancy. I don't know if we're anywhere in that loop at all or have been in the past where someone reports to us that yeah, these people are ready to go. Can you sign off on it? I don't know how that 
works with us. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. How it well, should. I don't see how you could get, Bobby, I'm just kind of spitballing mm -hmm. here. Because I have to say, you know, in terms of how things are administratively done on the ground floor of, of town hall for that, I'm not sure. But I kind of think that before you could get a certificate of occupancy, there has to be some proof that you're actually in some fashion right. well, either connected to the sewer or you have a Title V. A Title v. Um, I believe the Board of Health was, has to sign off that is an appropriate Title V and that the sewer superintendent signs off that uh, the co connection has occurred. So the building inspector has that document. Listen, Conservation has approved it if it's in the wetland. So there is a whole series of approvals that are needed before the final, you can go into your house is done. Yeah. Well, just so maybe the thing, oh. I was just gonna say, yeah, the, so I've done two of them so far and they contact us to come out and look at their final attachment. Uh, and then we have a physical card and then I know that it was completed so that I can go onto the <coughs> radar system, I believe, and yeah. give the approval that it's been completed. So it's a form that you get to tell you to go out to check the inspection? It is a paper form, and then a, through- Who do you get that from? Uh, we have them. But I mean, who? So the office In the end, there's a full Does it come from the building come department come or the plumber? After it's all been through, so the, there's a series of contractors that have been pre-approved in town to do the tie-ins. Mm -hmm. um, those people come in with the final inspection card. We've gone out and looked at it, and then every single department signs off on that physical paper. <coughs> but then also through the VADAR system, I have to go in and approve. That's before the, the that's beforehand though to say that they can tie in. I've done a few of those just to make sure they had a stub available or that they were changing use and that the new use would have no it, additional flow. See, you're dealing with the people that are abiding by the law. We're, I'm trying to get the people that are ignoring it. Right, so the only reference you would have is when you have people that are abiding. So that comes back to going after them with this font. But they couldn't, you, they couldn't get a certificate of occupancy. Well. They may have already had one for but, the, but, oh, you're talking about amended. But see, payment. you're talking about new construction. Right. If we go into an area in sewer, the houses that have been there for 20 years, right. they don't need a certificate, for, okay? Well, for, That's for the any, people oh, I want to go after. Bernie had just brought to my attention a, a new development going in next to the school. Yes. And they are putting in currently a brand new Title V system. But they're going to also be required to connect regardless within five years. Is that what you're saying? Yes, because the main goes right by the... Well, all, okay. what I'm trying to do is put some teeth behind the five years. They're ignoring it for 10 years. Yeah. Well, under uh, the section have, we were just referring teeth. to the paragraph, in new developments, it's specifically in two, three, sections two, three, and four, design of any proposed sewer construction under this section must be improved by the commissioners. And the documentation they usually apply to is right there. The question, the question comes up with, but of the past people that are on the list that haven't connected, that are 10 years plus yeah. behind, who should have connected. That's the ones that we're looking at. Not, how do, how do we, how do we enforce forward. it on them? Well, that's the enforcement. Got, okay, so <clears throat> you know how to deal with new construction, so we're yeah. set with that. That's done. With, uh, and we know theoretically how it's supposed to work, the, the notices back and forth, the five years. So now we're talking about people who either did nothing or they right. overstayed their deferment. Overstayed their welcome. Yeah, so what do you do with them? Um, you pursue them through the enforcement mechanism in the bylaw. You start by sending them letters saying, pursuant to section such and such of the bylaw, uh, you were supposed to have connected by date X, 
you have not done so pursuant to section such and such of the bylaw, we can fine you up to $5,000 per day. Let's get something going here. So you start by sending them certified letters to that effect. They don't pick them up or they refuse them. Uh, constable. Yeah. Have them served. Yep. Yeah. You're probably talking to constable. Now, why do you have to go to that level? Of but that's what we seem to have to do. We have a list of people that have refused. We've probably got about six or eight that have refused. Refused the certified Th letter. 30 of them. When we last counted, there were 30 of them. 30 refused. Could not deliver, could not, would not pick up. That's not unmanageable. You know, if it were 300, hmm. 30, you could deal with that. Well, you have a constable serve them. And, then, and the reason why you have to go through that level of service is if you've got somebody who's really insisting that they're not going to do what they have to do under the bylaw, uh, it's going to end up in court. And the first thing that the reviewing judge is going to want to see is that these people had noticed that they were supposed to have connected, that you let them know that they should have connected, that you warned them that it was going to cost them a lot of money. And the only way you can prove all those things is with a, either the green card or something from Bob Short or whatever constable you're going to use saying, <coughs> okay. here's the letter. Now, if we're going to serve them, and there was some a resident, and their tax bill was being sent to Brockton. Do we have to serve them in Brockton? The tax bill is being sent to. That's Brockton. where their, that's where their residence is. They have a summer place down on Swift Beach. They live in Brockton. Well, yeah, you have to. So send the it tax to bill is going to Brockton. I okay, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I would. So that's the way we'd have to go about it. I would, otherwise. You know, they're going to say, oh, it must have got stuck in the mm -hmm. porch mm -hmm. door. No, okay. I wouldn't see that for six months. I, mean, I can hear it now. Exactly. All right. Moving on to your next question. Okay, the next one was. Peter, you got nine more like this? No. Yeah. Ten. Can I leave now? I'm <laughs> telling you. I, I quit drinking, but Rich. It, 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 it's what a terrible happens? thing. Get the Sam out. <laughs> One of them was um, whether or not those fines are up to date, but we'll get back to that. That's well, I can answer that. Uh, whatever's in the bylaw is up what to date. is what you've got. Uh, now, for well, fines, my question was: uh, Are those fees current, and, and uh, are they adjustable? You'd have to go to town meeting to adjust them. Yeah, and. Because unless we go after the 5,000, they're kind of light. Yeah. Well, it's, they say we have to go to town meeting to make, to change them. 200 and 300 dollars yeah. is kind of light. That, is that per day? It doesn't say that. Each day or portion of See, this, this, this. Well, constitute a separate offense. See, yes. But this is, this is okay, dated so 96. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't Peter. matter. That's what it is. Talking about, yeah. You're talking yeah. about two, you're talking about. Uh, what Rich just said, it's per day. Well, that's that's under section two. I'm talking about under section four. The oh, fee, those fees are, are light. Look at section four. The As two an alternative. Uh, yeah. The, well, that's an alternative. So, if you want it to be, that would still apply. Well, it's not as clear as it should be, and it no, would be nice if there was a, a sentence in here that said for each day, uh, each day of non-compliance shall be considered. Well, separate. that's that's why that question was: yeah. is that you but, know are those fees current or are they adjustable, and how do we change them? We have to go to town meeting to change yeah, those. To, to add language like I just described, you have to add that in. But you're not handicapped here because. Section four is an alternate to section two. Correct. You know, so if you want to section go section the, two's got a lot more teeth. Yeah, if you want to go for the gusto, mm -hmm. well, don't use section four. Don't you yeah. already have that here? Uh, where was it? 
Uh, each violation shall constitute a separate offense. Yep. Yeah, Under Section a... 4, you got a first offense, you got a second offense, you got a third and subsequent offenses. Yep. So, in other words, today he's cited for the first offense. Well, what is the Tomorrow, offense? He's cited for the second offense. What's the offense? The next day he's cited for the third offense. Not connected. So now you're up to $750. If they owe. On a daily basis. If they choose. And then $300. There'd be a different procedure, though. But so if essentially. You, if you want to work through the Section 4, first offense, second offense, third and subsequent offense, you're basically going to have to write a ticket. Every day. It, yeah, every day. Each day. Well, it, he has a uh, window to comply. I mean, you can't just keep standing out there overnight and say, oh, the next morning, walk in and write them another one, you have to give well, them could, an opportunity. You could, but I wouldn't want that job. No. <laughs> Can I ask you a separate question here on... Okay, we're going to do a round robin, so you got one more question. Uh -oh. Kiss off. i got nine more questions. <laughs> um, we're under Section 4 there, it says, an alternative to the civil, the commission or their agents or the town police or any other person designated by the town as having police powers. Who are they talking about? Well, in an ideal world, uh, the section four would specify everybody who had enforcement powers. Uh, it doesn't, which means that we would have to look elsewhere in the bylaws. And, and just to give you a a preview of coming detractions. I don't know the answer, but I'll tell you where we have to look. Uh, if there is a section of the town bylaws that talks about who can be the enforcement agent for town bylaws in general, then whoever is identified in that magical umbrella catch-all bylaw would fall into that category in section four. Um, could that fall under a outside town bylaw besides the sewer commission? Well, let's see. It says as an alternate person designated by the town having police powers as enforcement persons under this bylaw may enforce this bylaw or regulation or permit. So no, it would have to be somebody who was identified in it says this bylaw. Somebody's going to read it narrowly and say this bylaw. You can make an argument that there could be another outside section of the bylaw that let more people in on the fund. But would uh, this include the constables? I think oh, it would have to be more. Constables are not. No. They're not enforcement. No. You, no. you know, it's you think. Who decides who enforces? I think it's the selectmen. Well, it just. It was just kind of ambiguous there, wasn't it? We probably have to go before the selectmen and have them specifically the appoint someone. The enforcing power? Well, we'd have to go look at the powers of the commissioners. Where are we going to find that? Well, here they are. Well, isn't right Section 4, I mean, as an alternative to civil or criminal prosecution, the commissioners or their agents or the town police or any other person designated by the town as having police power. Okay, so it looks who like does the designating? The commission is, what's that? Who does the designating? Tell me. I think Tell the selectmen only. Okay. Could we use this for septic, for uh, sump pumps as a violation? Mm. Mm. Further down on my list. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, let's see. If you have a legitimate order concerning sump pumps based on a bylaw or a legitimately adopted regulation. Either us or the, t or the state. Well, it would depend on what the state law says. Okay. So just yep. park all that off to the side because there's a whole separate investigation that needs to be made about the authority to enact sump pump related things. So, but park that to the side. For, for the sake of discussion, let's say that there is such a legitimate authority that lets you make those orders. 
uh, yeah, whoever is identified as an enforcement person under the bylaw or in the alternative under state law could take action. Yeah. The bottom line is you need an identifiable person in either the bylaws or the state law right. or entity. Right, because you just you That's can't it. just have then you would need access to the house to confirm. Going off and enforcing this. Then you would need access to the house to confirm that there is a sump pump hooked to a sewer system. And well, you know, there's that's a. That's another whole level. That. Now we're really going down the rabbit hole. Okay. Yes. And in fact, we're not going down the rabbit hole. We're going into deep questions of constitutional law because, you know, you're getting into questions of search and seizure. Mm. Uh, you know, we're getting into hardcore constitutional issues. Exactly. So, how do you deal with that? You know, can you just knock on the door and uh, say, we want to come in and inspect? Sure. If they say no, can you stomp on their foot and push past them? No. No. Uh, can you kick down the door when they're off at work and... No. No. So, You've got somebody who won't let you in, uh, but you suspect that they're illegally connected. Okay. Here's a question for you. If well, let, me just, let, okay. let me just finish this thought, because it may Jesus tie Christ. into what you're going to say. So what you have to do is, after you've politely asked and you've been refused, and let's assume that you have reasonable suspicion that there's an illegal connection, and that's important. You have to apply to the district court for what's known as an administrative search warrant. Uh, in other words, to get the court's permission to go in and conduct a search. Now, uh, I can tell you that the first thing that the clerk magistrate is going to ask is, well, why do you think they're Ill illegally connected? And the answer has to be, better than because. Yeah, have show cause. So you have to have probable cause. So, so if we were to s take a picture of the sewer line, yep. showing that this water is coming in at a defined rate that would indicate a sump pump, right. that would be enough proof that we suspect that this house has a sump pump activity because the flow is different than a normal shower or dishwasher? Maybe. Uh, it's going to be up to the particular clerk, magistrate, or even the judge who hears it. You know, if I were sitting on such a request, uh, I'd say, yeah, that's pretty good stuff, but how do I know that that flow is coming from that house? You know, can you peer inside the manhole and see a pipe that's kind of roughly pointed in the direction of their house? It would be in each one of the stubs. The we connection. Can actually, we can, sorry, we could actually send a camera to video it on each house's stub and say, we went to this location, we went up this manhole, Interesting. X amount of feet, and the, the way the camera works, it can actually go up and peer into it and watch the water come out of that one house. Well, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> we actually just did this right, when you feel that little tickle. to make sure there was communication with the, set, with the system because roots had grown through the... But we got a separate, we, now, now we have a separate constitutional issue. <laughs> and I'm thinking about a, a video I saw on YouTube, which probably means this story is not going in, in, in any good direction, <laughs> about uh, someone who was using their commode down in Florida, or was about to use their commode in Florida, when up popped a snake, uh, up the toilet. Um, well, now I'm being a little facetious when I point to that. We don't want our camera. Uh, so it's uh, yes. navigating <laughs> so no, all it's, the way up the line. No, no, no. It's staying in our line. We are simply. Okay. It'd be like pointing it towards a, a, an open window. It's the the right. pipe is. We're inside the pipe. The we're stuff in, is here. And we're just looking at it. We're in our pipe in the right of way. Well, now, just a second. If you're still in your pipe, you can't prove it's their lateral. I can, based on the location and the direction. So you have GPS on it? I can locate it to the dot 
where it is underground. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the sound of all that. So y y you could you can isolate a lateral. Yeah. 100%. All right, that, that's now, good. Now, then that's yeah. good. Proof. I know there are a couple locations in onset that I've been told have shared laterals. They put a six inch lateral in and there's a few four inches tying into it. That would be a little bit different. In a case like that, let's say you had, would you say maybe two properties where you couldn't tell which of the two was right. involved, um, you, you'd have the application for administrative search warrant. You'd present the evidence that you've got these two properties, you've got evidence as this unusual flow. Uh, you know, here's the video of uh, the investigation we did inside our pipe not going onto their property and it's got to be one or the other or both you know i, I i'd like to think that well a judge or clerk magistrate would say okay that's probably the, the instance that caused all of the problems on Montico was three homes and the people were in florida when their sump pumps kicked on right so there was nobody living in the house that's pretty damn good proof that it's a sump pump. That's, that's, no, that's good evidence. Depends Might on not be the only evidence you need, but that's certainly good evidence. But it certainly would then tell us where to go put the camera. Yeah, I mean, w one additional step, if the house was deemed to be vacant, <clears throat> we could ask the water department to shut the water off at the curb stop. Ooh, I wouldn't start doing too much now. <laughs> too far. That wouldn't stop the sump pump. That's correct. No, so but if the, the water sump pump would be the only thing running. Yeah, the oh. only thing running would be. Put, put that's the, gone. Now we've you put know, the camera in there and then pull the electric so. meter and I see mean, if it stops. You know, the, the thing is, is that, you know, everything that we have to do, we have to do with respecting people's civil rights, you know, constitutional rights. And yeah, that means sometimes we've got to take the extra steps to get it done, but that's, yeah, that's, that's what it's going to take. There's a series of the incident rise to the violation of their rights. Well, if there's a problem, you don't want it to become us uh, violating the Constitution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Scott, do you have a question? We're going to go round robin kind of. No. I give, it gives me a chance. I, to uh, I've just been listening. And huh? to try to, I, you know, these are your things that you can do. Um, okay. You're otherwise, right. adhering to what, you know, you guys. Are you Sandy? Do you have a question? I cut you off on one, Sandy. I came Remember? back. I came back to it. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't I have know, a question. But Jimmy I, seems to have an issue with me asking questions, but I, I have nothing more at this point. For the, <laughs> we're talking about hookups and fines for not hooking up, but I would like to take a stronger stand on this whole list of 40 some odd homes that are homes that are not connected to sewer going back to Briarwood and Rose Point, which is a long time ago. Which and I'd like to make one. a major set up, uh, uh, redo these again on certified letters, undelivered, not picked up, refused, received. Yeah, but the, the answer is we have to hire a constable and serve them, period. Well, we have some that have been received. They've been received. Well, how come they haven't hooked up and they received this three years well, ago? Well, that, my my that, suggestion would be, and I'm sorry to step on your toe, Peter. Do it all over again. Yes. Yeah. Strongly document. Right. Where we sent it and who we sent it you to. You have to have a good paper trail. Yes. You, you've got to think about this almost in reverse. You've got to think about what's that, assume that ultimately it's going to require a judge pointing his or her finger at someone saying, you got to do this. And the judge, you, got, you want to work back from that mental image and put together everything you think you need to get the judge in the position where he or she is going to feel comfortable going, get it done. Yep. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's not the fines that you're really interested in. I mean, you know, it'd be nice to have them, of yeah. course, but it's you want the compliance, not the fines. So no, we, we, uh, if 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 they were to if they were to connect, we might negate the, yeah. the fines. Yeah. 
because these are all stubs, which I means they're, this they're no for rich for rich. These are all stubs. Their flows are already documented and including in our calculations. So we're not adding new flows, but I think we should go to this list of homes that are not connected and redo it from scratch, doing certified letters mm -hmm. for address after address for these. I see three years ago there were how many people that had not connected? S Seventy-seven. Let's see where they are now, because um, I, I, to me, we should do a st do it again, document it, in a good paper trail. I agree with yes. you, Sandy. That's exactly the way to do it. Because I don't know whether or not there was a paper trail sent out from the last time they did it. So do, we'll do it over again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. to confirm. By return receipt requested. One more time that the list that we have is in fact not connected because they may have been connected and not removed from the list. I have a quick question. Was the original letter sent with a green card? I have no idea what she did. Awesome. <laughs> well, I guess my only question in doing, I would expect in, so in, in rehashing, would it start the five year clock again? That's a, that's a separate thing. Uh, There would be no resetting of the five-year clock. The bylaw says you send the notice. They have to respond by saying, I want a deferment up to 60 months. Uh, and then once that time period's gone, that's gone. If, you, if when you're putting together your record, if there's no evidence that, if you, hopefully you have evidence that you sent them a letter saying you better connect. If you don't have that, that's right. a problem. Mm -hmm. But what's for the sake of discussion? Say you've got the evidence that you've got that, I'll call it the trigger letter. I mean, you have to have that. Uh, and the trigger letter went out. You've got evidence that the trigger letter went out. Uh, if you don't have evidence that they came back and asked for a deferment, then they didn't get a deferment. Simple as that. And then there's no resetting of the clock. It's that there was a course of action here you could have followed. You didn't. You went out and, and did Cindy, your own yeah. okay, just for I think we just, just have to start over because we don't know whether or not they got it and asked for deferment and maybe it was given. And some of right. the notes said it was not picked up, which leads me to believe a certified registered letter was sent because it was not picked up. Mm -hmm. Just, or just, refused for, just for clarification on this when you put sewer in an area do you have to notify all of the homeowners in that particular area that you're putting sewer in you have to notify well you're pretty going to be getting, getting better better better. just wait a minute well they're going to wonder what you're doing in the street out in front of the house <laughs> okay so so they they read it in the paper or you you tell them yeah. and are you do, charging do, them a betterment my, what have you you'll be charging a betterment yeah well, if you're going to charge them a betterment, you got to let them know about that. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy, I'm well, going if to. If they paid the betterment, mm -hmm. isn't the betterment alone the fact that they have a betterment based on sewer notification? You can argue that, yeah. In lieu of a letter per se to him. I'm paid my betterment, he's paid his betterment, I'm hooked up, he's not. The, the best case is always gonna be you've got the full paper trail. Okay, so now that we've said that and that's off mm. to the side, <clears throat> now we're talking about trying to, we're talking about litigation strategy. Okay, you know, I'll, where, I'll believe that. No, 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 no yeah. I'll follow it through. No. Uh, <clears throat> where, you know, we don't have the perfect paper trail where we're trying to prove that They'd known that they were connected. Uh, and I think in that circumstance, we are in court arguing that they had, uh, there are two types of notice, actual notice and constructive notice. We're going to argue that the best notice is always actual notice. Right. Uh, constructive notice is that there was a course of uh, events such that a reasonable person would have known that the event happened. In this case, I think you could argue both actual notice, betterment, 
and uh, constructive notice, and we weren't digging holes out there for the hmm. benefit of our health. Hi, Jimmy, I'm just gonna, when sewer came by, we were required to identify the location of our stub and sign something that we will connect within a time frame, a year or five years. We had that in document. Who's we? Okay, so, so in other Me, words, Sandy Slave, and Alan Sla Allen, the homeowner right, of the property. That's all I ask. Yeah. Don't get, we got get it. pants in a rumble. We got it. Oh, who would so have the didn't you have, don't you have sewer? I was done before I got here. Yours was connected before you arrived? Mine, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. so I'm the only, yeah. I had to, we had to go, Alan and I had to go through this paperwork that's saying, yes, so it's coming. We are committed to it. We have such and so such a time So that would be what Jimmy's well, talking I was trying about. To that was notification. Yes. So somewhere over at the plant office, so you would think somewhere. there's a, in a file Where drawer. do you want your stub? That type of thing. Yeah. 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 Hmm. But the whole Bob thing is, like if to you go this, with the certified letter the and start over again, you're covering all the bases. Wait a so, and you're establishing I, your paper trail all and, over again, and you're a fresh paper trail. Right. And we don't know that some of them weren't given a deferment. Well, we don't know. Oh. Yeah. Better read your files. We're we're gonna gonna have to, uh, we'll see if the, that exists. So if we do it from scratch, we're covered. It's the only way, yeah. Yeah. You know, from everything we've been seeing here, it, it kind of boils back down to the fact that there are probably records available that we're unaware of. Why well, bet on it? That we have been unaware of and that haven't been presented to us regarding all of these places that show up on your list. So we should do our so research. So that we should do our research in-house before, before we, put we out waste time. Mm -hmm. it, 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 Jimmy, when I say I bet on it, I'm not casting stones. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, in the past, uh, the sewer commissioners were the board of select. I understand. And the board of selectmen. I was a sewer commissioner when I was a selectman. And and I'll tell you, when I was a sewer commissioner, I wasn't looking at the the nuts and bolts day to day details of what was going on. So there's going to be a lot that you or the selectmen wouldn't be aware of, which is not a, a knock, it's just the way no, it works. I, I understand that, which is, that's why I'm saying that, you know, from the way the discussion has gone and listening to everything, uh, it seems to me that based on like what Sandy said, there are probably records that we were not privy to or didn't bother to find out to give to us or, or whatever or, or the case. Or weren't brought to you because the right. customer practice was out. So it was, it was simpler to And it didn't need them at the time. Yeah. It was simpler to play this other I game mean, that's I going mean, on that right exists. now about we've got a list of people that haven't connected. Well, why haven't they connected? And do we have any reason to go after them other than the fact that we read something here that says they've got five years and it's exceeded the five years? Well. The ones that haven't responded, is there a reason we've got any, do we have any of these records? And, and I'm not. There are paper look, files that are pretty extensive yeah. on, on every and I think that, I think connection that's where, or approved connection. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Let Christiana look at some of those, see if she can dig yeah, some stuff Yeah, I would up. give her that list and let her go through. She's the one who created it. We'll let her find out then to go let her get go the go history. Let her go the next step. Sandy, yeah, I, I might, you know, call it the uh, thrifty 30 or whatever, <laughs> however, uh, describe them and, and, you know, start your paper search yeah. with that bunch. And Jimmy, uh, I think this leads into the, the next thing of um, the properties that started out as single family homes and now they're multi-unit yeah, dwellings and Airbnbs. how, how do we, we best deal game? with that. Yeah, we'll start that. That's our... Uh, on the agenda, make sure it's on the Sandy. See, we asked Peter what his third question is. We've gone through See, two. See, we, we haven't got past question one. No, we haven't, have we? No, but we're going around Robin. There's nine more to come. And Rich, I don't have a question, but I am being the messenger from Lee of two pieces Sam Adams is just of information going. they need an opinion on. One of them you and I discussed, but Derek wants something in writing. Okay. You can remind me later. Very good. Uh, Bob? Uh, I, I was just um, bringing up the uh, the point of the, the 
change in use, I guess. And also, what qualifies, I don't know if it's a question you could answer, but what would qualify as a change in volume? Is adding a bedroom a, a change in volume? I don't know if Absolutely. we would speak to about. That's 100%. About that 100%? 100%. Okay. And that, that's covered under section one? It is, yeah. Yeah, every bedroom. Any person proposing a new discharge into the system, a substantial change in volume or character of pollutants are being discharged into the system, shall notify the commission at least 45 days prior to proposed change as a connection. Now, that would even go to adding a bedroom, which the moratorium prohibits. Prohibits. Well, yeah. that would be increased flow, mm -hmm. but also on the flip side, it doesn't change the use. Whether I have two bedrooms and create another four to five bedrooms, still a residence, single residence, still a single EDU. It's a single EDU, but it's not the same flow because Correct. it's said, 110 it's, per Oh, per indeed, I, but I said that's the flip side. It's still got a residence. So it's still a violation of the moratorium. It becomes a violation mm -hmm. on that basis, yes. Yes. But if they said the bedroom becomes a rental, then it's a change in use. True. Yes. But I think it, it also goes back to the planning board when they get these variances that they issue, they don't apply some of these huh. variations in our bylaws. Yeah, well, have you got a copy of this? Would they have to? Yes. You know, they have got their own jurisdiction. Pardon me, but yes. Indeed. I, jurisdiction. Indeed. Our, the section our expectation yeah. is that they have, should notify us. But if you read what their responsibilities are, no, they just follow their own rules. And that's the way it's built. Yeah, and, and, and they would say to you, and I'm not sticking up for them, or I'm not for or against them. It's just uh, we now organizations work. I think, you know, you, you've got to uh, somehow build that neural connection between the, the two brain cells here so that when they do something that they yes. Notify you. Uh, indeed, and like I get their uh, their agenda, and I see there's subdivisions proposed, and it. I, my expectation of them is that they follow their rules, and meet the criteria that they're required to. We have to follow ours because we are individually responsible for the sewer that the subdivision is going to install. If, if if the subdivision is the sewer. And make the assumption, or they have at least have a main going by the front door, whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me, what I'm getting at though is we have to be more diligent of these things and not expect the other agencies within the government to do it for us, not their responsibility. Excuse me if I skip you, Peter, but I, 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 Jim, do you have a question? No, I, I... Okay, then we'll come back this way. Board. Next one is Peter. <laughs> Next question. Scott. Yes, sir. Have you got a copy there? I do now. <laughs> Under yeah. Section 2, uh, 50, um, Section 2, Under 55, if you go all the way down to a number 11... Yep. Okay. Do we have shutoff devices on the sewer lines? Nope. Are they allowed? No. Okay, that's what was the question was going to be. Are they allowed? And I didn't think they were. But according to this, it's in there. And we can lock them off. That would be a, that would be a public health hazard. That's, it's, that's it's, what I thought. Yeah. So, so in other is, words, is we've, got, we, we've, so what got are we in, we've got an incorrect bylaw. <laughs> this we do. Section two the, of this the way this bylaw 11, reads, you could actually page, shut someone's page 56. sewer line off. It's in section two, number 11 of the bylaw. Number 11, okay. Mind if I read it out loud again? Go right ahead. Please. Go right ahead. The town reserves the right to full control of flow from any appurtenance installed into a public system. A shutoff device approved by the commissioners or their agents shall be installed at the Right end. there, stop. <laughs> With pleasure. <laughs> Shutoff device yeah. shall be installed. That's, uh, that's a large cork plug. Have we haven't done one. It's called a pig. No, you would oh, never no, know. You would not. I, you wouldn't find me. Okay, so that's illegal. 
I'm not sure that it's illegal. No, no. Well, Apparently, attorney, it says that it's illegal. The attorney general approved this bylaw. Yeah, so I'm not sure. So that's, so we're sure it's illegal. illegal. You want to continue, illegal. Illegal. You want to continue with illegal. reading it? I, what's that? You want to continue reading it? Uh, I don't know that I do. <laughs> um, it, it, it doesn't say much, but it's important. Shut off key. Uh, device always operational. Shut down. I mean, you know, to me, okay, it says what it says. <laughs> uh, I read the last sentence. <laughs> so I, think, I think it was misapplied because I, I believe that this article would indicate that the owner of said sewage is the owner of the cost for the backup and everything else <laughs> at their house. However, if we become the cause of the backup, mm -hmm. I think that would be a problem. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, I so if I could tell you. Well, no, I mean, if we lock it off, obviously we have to notify them. It says all of that here, but. There's no physical mechanism on, on any sewer line. All I wanted to know was, well, they, they when I read it, I just wanted to know whether it was legal or not. Blow up and I didn't take it. Yeah. No. But I, you know, okay. okay. I would Moving just, on. Town meeting approved this. The attorney general approved it. I'm telling you, please don't ever use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, again, I think the attorney general is regarding who's uh, responsible for the proper disposal of the sewage. However, Again, going back to if you, if we cause the improper disposal of the sewage. Oh yeah, we're gonna, we're on the hook. Yeah, no, we. And, uh, uh, I believe this was improperly applied. And when I see this <laughs> sort of thing, <laughs> to me, although it doesn't say this, it this reminds me of the sort of thing that you see where you're dealing with industries rather than with the residential property. Correct. But that's just an observation. May I, you know, like throw some big wheel? Yeah, yeah storing of the sewage in next the basement one. is not a problem. Okay, well, the next one was under section, the, the very next page. Um, Prior to right, right under 57, the section 8. But we'll, we'll kind of hash that to death. That, that, that's Tell you, the Pete, roof drains on the You're buying lunch next time. Yeah. <laughs> that's why a head didn't show up today. <laughs> <laughs> I had all of these at lunch. I know. <laughs> Peter and I had lunch. <laughs> um, but the, the, the Section 8, it, 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 it basically gets right back to the sump pump. So, I mean, we've kind of hashed that to death. I, no, I think this is outside the house. What else we got? Um, Ignoring, I, th I don't think this covers sump pumps. No, but I, uh, you're right, Sandy. Uh, but I think it, it, it does sort of pertain to the, the broader concept of unauthorized uh, connection to our system. Uh, Massachusetts has a general law preventing the... Yeah. Yes, right. Massachusetts has a law regarding sump pumps right. going so, into... So nowhere could we make it less? No, we, we can only make it more, more stringent. Right. Yes. Right. So the law applies. Mm -hmm. yep. With or without it being right. expressly in. But this does allow us to look at roof runoffs and downspouts and stuff like that. So it's it's beyond so sump pumps, which are inside the house. Uh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. That. I didn't hear your comment. It doesn't run into the sewer system. Who cares? No. Uh, well, uh, actually, what I was I was going to say is something similar to what Jimmy's saying. Uh, it lets us look at that stuff. Uh, and then the key language is in that last line, which is in turn connected directly or indirectly to the sewer. So if it's just general runoff, that's, you know, planning board, somebody else. But if, you, if you go to the very next page, Article 5, uh, Division 5, Article 5, and the use of it, no person shall discharge or cause to be discharged any stormwater, surface groundwater, roof runoff, or subsurface drainage uncontaminated cooling water, unpolluted industrial into the sanitary and sewer system. There it is. Yeah. There's your so sump it's pump. all right there. Yeah. But I mean, that, that comes all back to our sump pumps problem. Yes. You've got everything written down there, Peter. I'm gonna let you go. Okay. Um, 
on that Division Five, Article Five. <clears throat> if you go down to Section Three, what page I'm is trying to find it. Uh -uh. Division Five. Division Five, Article Five. Someday can we redo these bylaws so that it's like five. it's for the fifth page from the one, last one, two, three, four, rather than you know. Okay, Article Five. What section? Three. Three. Okay. Okay. Um. Is any of this mentioned in the IMA with Bourne? Well, the IMA with Bourne, this is, I'm, I'm saying this from having looked at IMAs for a, a number of different communities, so I'm not speaking to the one we have in particular. Typically, an IMA with a contributing community will say something like, uh, the contributing community shall adhere to the processing community's uh, bylaws and regulations and shall adopt uh, bylaws and regulations that are no less strict. So I, I think the thing to do would be to pull up the IMA and look for language that says something like that, because then it kind of incorporates all this by reference. Just trying to point to direction that comes up for review next year contract yeah and if you go a couple of pages over division five article eight the power of the inspectors and this this goes back to to um my question on sump pumps do we does this give us any more authority it sort of says that doesn't it well, if you read that very first paragraph, it certainly does. Being, shall be, shall you be see committed it? to yeah. all properties. And, and you know what? You don't like it? It's a, Mara's not gonna be happy with your opinions here. You know that, don't you? You know, think of it this way. Mara might not be happy, but your family members will because I'm, protecting you from having your house taken in a big civil rights lawsuit. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great that the bylaw says Bank, that you can go in anytime okay. you want. You try something like that, oh, God help you. <laughs> and I mean that, God help you. But Just it's to there. check your sump pump. It, 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 it's there, it's the authority, isn't it? It's the, you're right, Peter. It, it is the authority, and it's the type of thing that I would cite to a judge when I was looking for the administrative search warrant saying, hey, look, judge, you know, our bylaw says we can do this and we've got probable cause, we've got Scott's video, so give me my search warrant, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then my last question, well, no, my second to last question was, uh, are, are those offenses, the fine numbers, are they up to date? I mean, this was back in 96. Could we add a zero to all of those? I know inflation's been bad, but. You, you, hey, it's I, Bidenomics. And, and I, I assume you're not talking about adding a zero to the front end. <laughs> Well, they may be. You know, that would be they may have been adopted in '96. Well, I, but yeah, they, right. as, as of 2020, um, whatever this is, I didn't even look. But this is the latest copy of the bylaws, so it hadn't been changed. I can, I can tell you that under uh, Chapter 40, the maximum that we can assess somebody for a, a bylaw violation is $300. Okay. You're up to date in Kansas City. <laughs> All right. My last question is, can we get a spot someplace on the permitting process that, that whoever's gonna build a house, add a bedroom, do whatever they're going to do, they have to come through us at some point? I'll check with the building department. And I mean, full copies of their if applications. You, if, you, if you and if we have a box on it that says yes, uh, this residence is going to connect to sewer and must refer to the sewer commission, 
or no, it does not. So it's just continue, well, continue um, on its way. Yeah, I talked to Paul and Jenna. Hmm. Yeah, but we're not there. Nobody talks to us. Now this girl, this Sharon, with the the uh, the dog grooming place down in Onset that wants to add the bedroom. At mm -hmm. least she's coming and asking. Yes, I got to call her. I have a note. That's the old um, police substation. Oh, really? Oh, okay, across from yeah. Spinney Library. Exactly. Yeah. But there is a lack of it, and all I ask of you probably is uh, when we have a regular meeting, make a motion so the board takes action. So we'll make a motion, and we'll take action and get the uh, form and see if it can be revised to assure that we are in the loop. Should we make the motion here? No. Not on the agenda. Okay. Want to break the open meeting? <laughs> It's yeah, ask me about that, Jimmy, how, how you do about doing that. What are you going to say? Just, it behooves us to be aware of what's happening in the various permitting boards. <clears throat> we, can, we can just, we can be proactive and say, okay, what's going on? And pay attention to what's happening on them. You can go into the website on each one of the uh, agendas generated and have yourself copied on it. I'm mine copy, I'm on the zoning and the planning. So I know what's coming up in front of them. Or you can go looking. Example, we had a project last night in front of conservation. Two duplexes being added to the Aguam housing project. Mm -hmm. Four single bedrooms connecting to sewer. The response from the engineer is, I talked to Guy about this years ago. We've never seen anything. And here's a project about to be built. And How can they get a certificate of occupancy? Well, they haven't even started anything yet. Uh, but they got, conservation. they got conservation approval on it. Well, this, this comes back to what but, I uh, said. But being aware of what's going somebody on. Somebody may have asked for an extension of the 60 months, and it may have been given. How did we it don't work? know. How well, did it work that they got cons uh, that they appeared before conservation? Uh, cons because they're up against wetlands in a flood zone. Okay. Therefore, they had to come before us for approval to build. That's that's fine. But I'm saying I think that they should have to come before us for approval. Well, to I told get them that. I told them that a discussion. There's no mechanism for that right now. I well, don't think. I mean, we have the dis authority, but a discussion with Guy years ago when this was approved by so at CPC, what five, six years ago, they got the funds. They're just trying to find a place to put these two structures on their property, and they finally have a plan. So I said, you got to come up in front of us, conservation. Sorry, sewer commissioners, wrong, wrong department. In, in several instances, Guy exceeded his authority. But uh, there's been no, I've seen nothing to indicate that there was four one-bedroom apartments would be accommodated um, outside of our moratorium. Okay, well, Bernie, you said we're gonna need a motion to get us on the building permit. Um, who, who writes out the, the, the building application? I mean, who has authority over that? Do, do we need to have, um, the town administrator here when we make the motion so that we know that it gets carried forward? No, we're not gonna make a motion to put one on. We're gonna make a motion to examine the documents and this body will take action based on that and make recommendations. You can't just arbitrarily revise the documentation. It could very easily have been a state document that they follow because oftentimes there's consistency so each community doesn't have a totally different application. Rich, would it help to sit down with the building department and discuss course, with yeah. them what well, I, what has happened in the past and what we would like to see happen from I think, this point forward? I think that's the way to go because... Well, who you know, has authority over the building department? Uh, Derek. Ultimately, the town administrator. Derek. Well, maybe we have got to speak with the town administrator to say, we have a problem here. Mm -hmm. We have a gap. It has to be corrected. That's yep. what I was getting at. Well, yep. that, and that's why I make I ask for a motion, because then the board is taking that action. Other than that, it's myself stopping by Derek's office and having a chat. But if we take a motion, it's formal 
and the board can take action. I act in well, behalf of the board. How about if we make a, a motion that we ask him to attend the meeting and then discuss it at that meeting with him? No, you don't need to do that. No. You can, if, I, I think if you went to Derek, I mean, I talked to Derek enough that I think I've got a good sense of how he's going to react to it. And, you know, he'll see that what you're trying to do is good, and all you're asking for is, in essence, permission to talk to one or two of his employees so that you can go and say, hey, we got to work this thing out, let's try to work it out. And Derek is going to say, fine. <coughs> That's, that's I something no I want to ask you for permission. Can I speak to some of your employees and ask them how we handle the, um, the requests for an abatement and what steps it goes through yeah, from, from the time the person asks for it right on down? I can tell you what I see for the Well, problem. I mean. She goes and she'll check the with the water department whatever it's on set or where him and the only, i guess they have to show that they have not okay had, like basically a drop all right of water. so now now you've seen all the documentation and we grant the abatement then what uh do they get paid I bring it back i, I do they get they, notified if they do get notified because i sign a letter after that saying I know people that have not. I just signed the two letters. Uh, well, this was prior to you. Fantastic, then. New room sweep. But they, so they, how did, how they didn't get notified, and so they, far, the ones and they didn't know that they, they, can, they can either take it as, uh, as a check or as against Correct. their next bill but they get nothing. I think, I think we're going to find a lot of this stuff coming I, yeah, up in the next I six months. Yeah, I can only months. tell you what I've done. Well, that's why I wanted to speak to right. you in personal to find out who, who sends out the letter that said, yes, the commission granted the abatement. Here. <laughs> yeah, so far, Christiana's drafted them up, provided them to me, I signed them, and then she sends them out. And I'll, so on that letter, they're given two options, either get paid or get a credit? I'm trying to figure out how they get their money back. Uh, I'm trying to think of the precise wording of, of the letters, but. Well, is it all right if I stop in and talk to her? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I think it's a problem, yeah. Well, one, once I do that, then we'll, we'll bring it back up and, mm -hmm. and we, we'll put it on the agenda. As Sandy said when we talked about it before, let's get all the answers before we ask the question. Of course, yes. I don't understand why there would ever be a hesitation to come in and talk to anyone. Uh, I, I can I can think of two people right off off the bat that never got any notice or anything, and we granted them. Okay. Charge being one. Yep. So hopefully it's just a misunderstanding, but well that's we'll find out. That that's why I wanted permission to go talk to, to Christiana. So. Because I, I have difficulties understanding the abatement system. Yeah, based on what I see, that she shows me the the, you know, the the water usage report, indicating that there's been no water usage for that year, and the abatement is okay. So the abatement is granted, and she sends out a notice that the abatement was granted. Does anybody tell the the person requesting that they can have it in a check form, and? I don't. Well, he doesn't I don't believe the letter. letter that I signed and, had, you know, an, uh, had. I didn't know. On how to I didn't know there. that until I talked to to uh, John Foster, and he's the one that said that they can have it either way. So I guess we're looking for a cover, a co copy of that standard letter that yeah. goes out. I'll I'll, I'll okay, research it and we'll put it on the agenda. Thank you. And they're all they they get signed and then scanned in, so she has a copy of everyone. So or everyone that I've signed. I can speak to you. You don't want me doing too many Pardon more me. questions. Will you remind me what it is I'm supposed to be getting to you? Beg your pardon? Will you remind me what it is I'm supposed to be giving to you? Yes. Just shoot me a quick. Oh, you want me to type it in? Yeah. I'll hand you the paperwork, though, and then, because okay. I have some notes on it. It's Fiera. We had chatted about this. I had advised Derek of our chat, 
and now he wants something in writing from you. So it hasn't been paid yet? No. No, because I, oh, I, I, I got it. another. Oh, uh, Ferreira? The, the original grinder pump contractor. Yeah. I thought we approved the payment. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. We did. Yeah, yeah, I don't need to be coy about that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, write the check. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> we didn't carry it over. I said that four months ago. Yeah. And, and the other and one four is four months uh, before that. Well, why hasn't yeah. it been paid? Then, Bernie, why hasn't it been paid? It's been waiting over there in town hall, Derek and now it comes back. The, I don't know. Exactly. You don't, there's there's another another way Derek really. throws, he throws nickels around like manhole covers. So it's waiting in a county or waiting in town administrator, who has the request for payment? Well, I haven't seen evidence as to where it actually oh. has been. I can speculate that it's been an inbox and things work up from the bottom and. It, Hit the top. Oh. You know what? On the, when I, uh, the person in question is in the middle of a hearing right now. But when he's out of that hearing, I, w I would be very happy to uh, <laughs> offer a suggestion. Yeah, just to get the thing paid and get it off the. Try to get the copies of those emails. Well, fellow commissioners, do we have any other questions of our town attorney? Yes. Yes, James. We've got a couple of properties on Main Street. I think you're aware of them. One of it, that Cooney property, that uh, they have put in three or four duplexes on High Street. Mm -hmm. They're putting in another, what looks like another couple mm -hmm. on Main Street, plus redoing the- It's big development. That, that obviously, is increasing our flow under the moratorium. Is there any way we can anything relative to that? I don't know that we do, but I, is there any mechanism or because they've never come before us to look for increased flow? Well, they, they I, we I just, have a moratorium on increased flow. We, it's on our list. We, it was approved yeah. before the moratorium. That was approved for how many? Uh, let's see, which address first? Which one? I think there was only one address. Oh, what, oh there's an there address there. on. Has it been split? Um, ABC High Street. 434 Main Street, uh, nine townhouses with 27 bedrooms. We approved the 3850 gallons per day in April 22. The one at 176, oh, that's Danny Warren's. The one on High Street, 108 High Street, three duplexes, eight bedrooms, we approved on March 2022 for 1760. What about the one, what about that greenhouse there that's been redone? That greenhouse has never been, we've never approved the, the greenhouse. It's now all white, the outside's been done. <laughs> that's not changing in its use, but they're planning to put, no, the building itself, it's not changing in its use. It's still a boarding house of some kind, rental units of some well, kind. They're planning, they're planning to put houses around it. They well, not- They got shot down on that. Th is that what you're talking about? No. The one across from CVS. I didn't think that- uh, I'm talking about the, the number of units they're putting in that. I do not know. <coughs> are they actually on High Street or are they that on one's Main? On, that one's on Main Street. No, their entrance is, there's no access to, high, to Main Street for that building. The access to that building is off of High Street. Oh, is it? Okay. And a drive about the duplexes? Splits in the property. The duplexes? They're both sides, I think. I'm trying to think if there was a curb cut. I think there's a curb cut there because the old house that was there had an access off of Main, off yeah. of Main Street. Right across from CVS. Oh, no, the, f further down next to the house that burnt. Okay. It's a Cooney property. Yeah, but we approved those back Prior to moratorium, we we talked about the, there was a flow for the buildings that were there, and we talked about the increase in flow because of what was being built in both of those two projects, one on High Street and one on Main Street. So we covered them, but that green building, I don't know how many people, how, what was the EDU in it before it was being re vitalized and what the EDU, what the rooms are now. But it, to me, it was always a um, multi-family multi -family unit. unit. I understand no. that, but what I'm saying is that uh, my understanding, and I'm not sure, 
100%. I don't know if the building department would have this information or not, but my understanding is they're increasing the number of units. I think it went back beyond because, yeah, we refused at something. I was talking with Mike and planning, and next thing you know, he took the roof off and put another unit up on top because they had four meters, electric meters, and now it's got a fifth one. A quick trip to the building department will give you the answer. Yep. And starting with the assessor's database to see what that structure had on it listed mm -hmm. as assessed bedrooms to begin with. Because we just had a building go up um, extension, the second floor being added to a uh, house off of Edgewood. And my question was, any more bedrooms? No, it was not entitled for a second bedroom. Uh, they had three bedrooms, they were not putting in another one. I'm sorry, I do ask those questions on conservation when they come up knowing they could impact uh, Flow. You know, and Sandy, they're good questions, and uh, ultimately the building department should have the answers because whatever they're building, they had to get yep. a permit for. When I s went to the building department site online, there was no indication that there was any living space other than any bedroom space for that increase, for that second floor being added. Uh, well, sometimes... I'm not saying this about this particular project because I don't know what's going on with this particular project, but parenthetically and not connected to anything we're currently talking about, it is not unknown for structures to have this extra space that you know is sold as well. You know, you can make a great home office. But there was no um, plumbing facility on that closet. second floor. Yeah. I, yeah. And, uh, well, I don't know. S some people do a lot of sleeping at their desk, I guess. <laughs> well, that's the other side of the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> be nice. Ouch. Come on, be nice. Ouch. <laughs> you got it in. Okay, everyone. Nice so who's going to look at this, the uh, building across from CVS? Who's going to do the research on it? Now, that seems to be the roadblock that we run into with everything. Who's gonna do it? Don't look at me. I'll do I'm it. not. I'll, I'll check it out. Well, first, I think we testing, need to talk I to Derek. I test my hearing aids, there you go. Yeah, first, they work. First, I think we need to talk to Derek and get his permission to approach the building department. But some of that stuff can be done online without talking to anybody oh, in yeah. the building department. Okay, well, yeah. uh, What's that address? Do we know the address? Here? Is I'd that have a to Main Street address or a High Street address? No, I can't. Re I think it was a High Street. I would have to go back to where him we can look at the article. I don't. I don't know. You know, now that you're telling me that the access is only from High Street, I didn't. Well, know that's that. why it got denied because of the right away from High Street. Oh, that's right too. It was a. It's a an easement. An easement. It's not they a denied driveway. it because of the easement. Yeah, the easement. The easement was uh, between two. Yes. That's why I think zoning denied it. Right. All the information is there online for the most part. All we have to do is get the addresses. And but my line's got a bend. Pour the next glass of wine and just go <laughs> for it. One more question. All right. One more May question. May I? One more question? Yes. Oh, by all means, Peter. This is like the 10th inning, Colombo. <laughs> exactly. We're in overtime. You got 30 minutes. If. If a house has a lateral. Has a what? A lateral, okay. The lateral going out to the sewer system yep. that passes under the neighbor's land. Mm -hmm. Who's responsible for the lateral? Yeah. And if, if the lateral needed repair and the homeowner was willing to do it, can he do it regardless of whether the person whose land it goes under? Is it going out directly to a main or? My, my, the lateral from my house goes under my neighbor's land. Do you have a lien or they have a lien? Uh, nobody has anything. Okay. There's nothing in your title? The house is worthless, it's unsellable. <laughs> you should have something in the title there's nothing that does that, and also with not, the uh, Brian has title nothing, of the other individual. So here's what here's what you got there. Uh, you can't put stuff on other people's land 
without their permission. And so a person who wanted to run a lateral through someone else's land would be prudent to get something in writing. Well, this was all done before oh, yeah. no, I'm present just, owners. Yeah, I'm just telling you, you know, in the uh, ideal world of, well, but, that we don't live but, in. But this, this exactly. exists. <laughs> sure. So let's assume that the pipe needs some repair. Who's responsible for the repair? Uh, the the uh, person who's served by the pipe is going to be responsible for the repair, but the person who uh, is served by the pipe is not going to be able to do the repair unless they have permission from the, the landowner across whose land the pipe travels. Otherwise, you'd be giving the, I'll call them the homeowner, uh, almost like private eminent domain power over other people's land. You know, the, the, the proper way to have addressed this, and maybe the proper way to address it going forward, hint, is uh, an agreement, uh, an easement. Just get an easement that says that, uh, you know, pipe to uh, 10 Main Street can travel across 8 Main Street uh, along these lines and uh, that the uh, owner of 10 Main Street has the right to maintain and repair said line. What if the, what the, what what if the, if the homeowner doesn't want to give you the easement? You got a problem. Oh yeah, you got a problem. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm not the only one that has this problem. Well, I would suggest to you to get an attorney get and make work. sure you get an easement from that person because your house is not saleable under the circumstances. I'll tell you, Peter, what you're probably looking at then is how long has the pipe been there? When did they put the sewers in 78? Okay, so you're probably Grandfather. looking at a adverse possession uh, claim. Where, and as you know, adverse possession is where you use someone else's property for 20 years or more without objection from that person. So. Ultimately, if you couldn't get an agreement, you'd probably have to go off to land court. And uh, well, I'm sure that this my house isn't the only one that has this problem. No, it is. I'd, be, see, I'd be willing to bet you, you we see have septic this. systems on other people's land. You see all kinds of crazy. Yeah. Things. Well, when they divided up this lot, I get that. Yeah. You know, it, it probably was all one big chunk of property yeah. at one time. Because my Louise has a similar situation in Somerset in that their sewerage goes through the property and back because the street is over there. So when she sold her house, she ought to tra transfer the easement also. Sad. But it would, uh, it, something you should look into. I remember when that started. Are we ready? I remember being out there, climbing up the hill. No, before. Oh, yeah. With Biffy and in motion. What's his name from? Uh, we want him in. What? 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 Motion to adjourn. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, second. Motion is made in the second. Mr. Bowen, thank you very much Four for your seven. time. I enjoyed it, and uh, you know, maybe as you strip it together, the, the thrifty thirty. Thank you for giving us your uh, hour you know, maybe we and a half. Sit down and go through the paperwork and see what we got. Indeed. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Motion is made and seconded. All those, all those, all those, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. It was done several. We did it not to